Hey everybody, I'm back and here to talk about announcer consoles or commentator consoles, whatever you want to call them. The names are kind of uh, interchangeable, but the bottom line is I wanted to kind of walk through a couple of the models that I have here and talk about why I've used these and give you a brief tour of each one of these things and talk about why you would use one of these things versus just a uh, regular headset plugged into an audio mixer. So, hey everyone, my name is Doug. I run a video production company in Utah, and I've been doing more and more sporting events over this last year or so, and I know I'm going to have more coming up. And so commentator boxes are something that's been kind of on my mind a little bit more than it has been in the past. Um, I've had in my possession for a while... Uh, this model over here, this Model 210 from Studio Technologies, I am retiring this thing as of this point. The one that I'm going to be moving to is this Glen Sound Express IP Mini, and there are a few reasons for that, but not, uh, not the least of which is the fact that it actually does two commentators, two headsets at the same time, instead of just having the one that I have with the Model 210 over here. And that simplifies setup quite a bit. But the other big reason that I want to go with this one is that it's Dante based and anybody who follows this channel knows that I use Dante for audio almost exclusively and I have absolutely fallen in love with it and I will be using it for everything that I possibly can. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about why someone would go with a commentator box rather than just a normal headset. And a lot of that is because the person who's doing the commentating has control over what's going on. So say for example, over here, we've got a button to turn their microphone on and off. So if they want to go off air for whatever reason, they can just press a button and they're muted. No problem. Another thing that these offer that make it very easy to do is IFB or interruptible foldback or, or feedback, depending on who you ask. And that allows a, a producer or a director or anybody on the tech staff to be able to talk to on-air talent in their headphones and be able to communicate with them at any point in time. Now, the other thing that these uh, offer as well is the ability for the on-air talent to be able to communicate back to the crew, and that's done through talkback circuits. So the Express, Express IP Mini over here actually has two talkback circuits, and then my Model 210 over here has one. So essentially what happens there is if the on-air personality wants to be able to communicate with the tech staff or whatever, they can just press one of the buttons here and that will communicate some of that audio to somebody else rather than that audio going live. That allows you to have two-way communication between your announcer, your commentator, and your crew with one piece of equipment and not having to do anything strange with microphones and turning them on and off or anything like that. It's just basically a simple button press there. Now with that said, again, let me give you a kind of a brief tour and I'm going to go, I'm going to focus on mostly on this uh, Gwen Sound Express IP Mini because it offers more functionality, uh, but we'll kind of go from top to bottom here. So up top we have a mic on off button and as configured right now, that's, that's a, a toggle that just turns on and off. And you can change that in the configuration menu for the software where it's always live express when, except when they press the button in order to mute. We call that a cough button. And then we've got a knob next to that to allow the volume of the program audio, like your main audio for your, your video, for your production, to be heard. And they can adjust their own volume for that so they can hear as much or as little of that as they want. Now, normally commentators are going to be on air, so they're probably going to want to hear themselves and know that they're on the air. So they're probably going to have that turned up. Just below that, we have our audio level for the Q. When, in my case, that's IFB channel A. And I put a little sticker on there to indicate that. But that is the channel from producers or uh, tech staff in order to communicate back to the on-air personality. From there, we get to the talkback circuits. And there is uh, both a button to enable. And then there is a volume control for that as well. So all these volume controls, I should mention, are always live. So the person who's on-air commentating is able to control the volume for, for all four of these different sources. So we've got program, the Q or IFB, talkback one and two, and they can adjust those levels as they desire. So if they want to hear less of the IFB, they can turn that down, or if they want to hear more of it, or if they want to hear less audio from the talkback circuit, which in my case I have going to the technical director, they can turn that down or turn that up or whatever. Or if they wanted to have less or more of TalkBack 2, which in my case is the party line for camera operators, they can adjust the level of that as well. In most cases, for my, my setups, they're not, they they're not going to want to hear that, so they're going to want to turn that down 
quite a bit. But I should mention here that when you press one of these talkback circuits, it actually mutes the on-air audio. So as, if you watch as I press this button here, you can see that it turns off the A microphone channel there, and then what, releasing the button turns them back on. So that makes it very easy for them to just very quickly interrupt their audio, redirect that to the talkback circuit rather than being on air, and they can th therefore communicate with somebody that's on staff and on the crew very, very easily. Same thing with TalkBack Button 2 as well. There are some configurable options on this device for how those are handled, but by default, that's the way that those work. Down here, down at the bottom, there are two knobs for controlling side tone, which is basically hearing your own audio. It will allow you to control how much of that you're hearing. Um, for the way I actually use these devices, the side tone is not useful. Uh, they're getting their own audio through the program or the other talkback circuits, so the side tone off for me doesn't doesn't help at all. And then there's another one here for COM B, which is going to be this B circuit over here. So there are two separate circuits on here that are identical, one for uh, input one and then another for input two. And this COM B here allows them to hear the commentator on the opposite side. So commentator one to hear the audio from commentator two, and then on this one, COM A allows them to hear audio from commentator one and so forth. So again, for my situation, probably not actually that useful because I have those that audio coming through program, but it is there for people who are not taking advantage of that feature, are not, not doing that. It allows the two commentators to be able to hear one another. There is one thing about this that I find disappointing. The microphone circuit does have to be live for those to work. I really wish that was something I could configure. That way, the commentator can go off air and still be able to communicate with the person they're sitting next to, the other commentator they're sitting next to, very easily without having to go through another circuit. I've kind of resolved that. I've kind of solved that by having the talkback audio work that way. So if, if commentator one wants to talk to commentator two, they can very press one of the very quickly press one of the talkback buttons, and that allows the other the other commentator to be able to hear them as well. Now moving around to the front, it's pretty simple here. So there's a microphone input and then a headphone output. I have this plugged in. I have a, a Audio Technica BPHS1 headset plugged in. And that's kind of been my go-to for this for this kind of thing. And then over here on the left, we've got a microphone gain knob and then a switch to choose the level of the microphone input to go between mic, line, and a microphone with phantom power. Uh, one thing that's interesting about the way that Gwensound has done this, when you set it to mic with phantom power, it actually drops the level of the microphone by about 10 decibels or thereabouts, uh, with the assumption that condenser microphones that require phantom power are going to be a lot louder inherently than a dynamic microphone. So that's something that uh, that these devices from Gwensound actually do, and you probably won't find elsewhere. That's kind of it for the top and the front. Let's take very, a very quick look at the back. Very simple here, we've got our Dante network audio control here. And that's just uh, Ethernet. And this device is powered by Power Over Ethernet, or POE. And so this Ethernet cable is not only providing the data connection for Dante, it's also providing the power to run this device. Over here on the left, we have a switch to control what output B on this does, whether it's a mix of microphones A and B, or whether it's the B microphone by itself. Having it be a mix allows you to get away with only having one channel, audio channel, come out of this and, and map, be mapped to your audio mixer. Otherwise, you can flip it to B mic only and then have those be mixed separately on your audio mixer. Now, if we compare that to my older analog unit, and things are a little bit different. You can see that, first of all, that there are a lot more connections on the back, and that's because each one of the different channels has its own. So even though my Gwen sound has four channels in and out, this one only has two, but you can see that it has a lot more connections going on. So we've got power, we've got two line level inputs for program audio and for uh, talkback, and then two microphone level outputs for the main audio channel program and for the talkback. Uh, over here we have the connections for headphones and for the microphone on the headset. And then we have a jack down here on the lower left, which is the IFB circuit, which is actually a circuit for uh, Clearcom style intercom, which allows you to have the I, use IFB feature of Clearcom intercoms in order to provide talkback or IFB for your on-air personalities. Up top, we've got two buttons here. So one button which toggles between live and muted. Um, when you press and hold, it becomes a temporary button. If you just tap it, it, it toggles back and forth. And then talkback, which, see if it 
if I press talk back here, you can see that it mutes the main channel. And so that the on-air personality can talk to your crew without that audio being live. And then on the front, we've got two different audio level controls, basically left and right. Now underneath there are a series of dip switches here, which allow you to configure how this device works. So set some uh, gain, uh, change which signals are, are going to the left and right uh, headphones and a bunch of other options that are there as well. So if you want to reconfigure this device, you would remove this bottom panel by removing the feet. And then that allows you to configure all sorts of things by flipping the dip switches. All right, let's take a brief look at uh, the Glen Sound website. We'll get a couple of products there and also Studio Technologies. So the first one here is the Express IP Mini. It's the device that I have here in front of me. Uh, it's something that I've only recently acquired. I got mine through Dale Pro Audio here in the United States. It's a, it's a company is in the UK. It's kind of hard to get the products here in the United States, but I was able to able to pull that off so this is the again the device that we were just looking at it provides four channels in four channels out and i'll show you here in a minute what those actually what those channels actually are the express ip mini is actually a newer version of a larger one this is called the express ip mark ii uh, it's basically the same idea but it's in a slightly larger form factor uh, and I think it's got slightly higher build quality as well although I haven't had one in my possession to take a look at. There is one notable thing that's missing here and that is uh, that there is no um, microphone gain knob on the front. The gain is fixed. And that's something if you're working with microphones that have kind of a gain that's not standard you might want to consider going with a mini just for that very reason. So here we go. This is the Express IP Mini. So I got it from Climb Sound. This is what the, exactly the price that I paid for it, sixteen eighty. That has gone up a fair amount in recent months due to inflation and exchange rates and all those all those other kinds of things. It used to be twelve hundred something, and I waited too long to get mine. Studio Technologies is another company that I love. Its products are amazing, and they do make both analog and Dante versions of the announcer console. And you kind of just choose which one. It's going to work for you based on the number of talkback circuits that you need or other circuits, whatever. So, and then you have, for example, we scroll down to the bottom here. We've got one that's got the uh, basically your two main, and then it's got four talkback circuits that you can use for actually, you can use for anything. It doesn't have to be talkback. Um, that would be more for a producer or some technical person on your, on your crew. But uh, these make it real easy in order to provide high quality audio uh, for, a kind of, for a commentator system that you might use with, with the sporting event. Now, one thing that I wish that Studio Technologies offered that they apparently do not is a single box that, a lot, that supports two commentators simultaneously. This is going to be really, really handy because all the sporting events I've worked uh, to, to date, I have, there are two commentators sitting side by side. Uh, and it's nice to have a single box that I set up in order to get audio for both of them at one time. Let's take a look briefly at how I have mine configured. So this is the Dante controller software. This is basically how I have my audio routed. So, so the Glensound Express IP Mini actually has four channels of output. Those are TalkBack 1 and 2 there. We also have one that's dedicated for Microphone 1, and then another one which is either Microphone 2 or a mix of Microphone 1 and 2, which is configured via, via that switch on the back. And then it has four inputs. So if we look over here, we've got one for program, one for cue, one for talkback one, and one, one for talkback two. In my case, I actually have, let me open this up a little bit here. So we have my Yamaha TF3, which is my main audio mixer that I have in my trailer. And we can see here that microphone one on the Express IP is routed to channel one on my TF3, and then microphone two is routed to channel two on my TF3. And that makes it really easy for me to include commentator audio in my main, pro my main program audio mix is going right to my main mixer. If we take a look at my audio mixer, my TF3 software control application, you can see that as I'm talking in the headset, that audio is appearing on channel one there. And if I turn and mute the microphone on the Express IP Mini, that channel goes quiet. I have the other channels going to my intercom, which is my Behringer X32 rack mixer. So we can see that those channels here are coming from TalkBack 1 and 2 and are going into what I call Dante I and Dante J on that on the X32. You can see over here I have those in my X32 software and those are Glen Sound, TalkBack 1 and TalkBack 2. I have those on channels 21 and 22 here. And you notice here that as I press the TalkBack 1 button, 
on the Express IP Mini. That audio is now appearing in on my X32 rack, and now it's also appearing in the mix that's going to the uh, techn technical director that's in the trailer, and so he's able to hear that. Another thing that's worth mentioning here is that I have that panned hard left, and so that the the technical director is listening to the audio through their headset. They're able to distinguish that that is coming through, coming from the talkback circuit rather than being part of the main camera party line that we're using to talk to the tech talk to the camera operators. Similarly, if I come over here to cameras one through four, came over the mix for cameras one through four, and if I press talk back two, you'll see that audio level is now coming up on that channel, channel 22 there, and that is going out to the camera operators as well. So the, the on-air talent can then talk to camera operators if they need to. For the small productions that I do, that can actually be valuable, and so that option is there as well. So that'll give you a little bit of a summary of how these systems work a little bit. It's basically, it's a really cool way of making sure that you're able to incorporate audio from your commentators, announcers, whatever you want to call them, into your program, but also provide them the means to be able to communicate with the crew and for the crew to communicate with them as well without having to come up with these really complicated set setups where you've got dozens of wires running everywhere and having to create special mixes on your mixer just for that particular purpose. This is gonna make my job as a video producer much, much, much easier in terms of setup and configuration and just providing the capabilities that people need in order to provide an effective means of doing commentary and announcing for sporting events or other similar types of events. For setup, it's, all I'm running is a single ethernet cable which runs to my breakout box and then that goes to the Express IP Mini and I plug in the two headsets and I'm done. Everything's already ready to go at that point. I don't have to worry about running dozens of cables in order to provide all of the different signals, uh, running those whatever distances are necessary. This, this is really just one single ethernet cable and it handles all of that very nicely. Now in terms of what I like about the Gwen Sound Express IP Mini, uh, I like the capabilities of the unit for the most part. Uh, as mentioned earlier, I really wish that the COM A and B were independent of the status of the mic buttons. That would be really nice for the commentators to be able to communicate with one another off the air. Fortunately, it does not do that. The microphone circuit does have to be enabled in order for that to work. The other complaint that I have about these is these knobs are a little bit, I don't know, they're kind of cheap feeling. They feel like they kind of um, went with something a little bit cheaper than what they probably should have in order uh, for, the, for the, especially for the price of this unit. This thing was not, not cheap. Um, $1,700 is a significant amount of money and it real feels, it really feels like they could have done with some higher quality components in terms of the, the potentiometers that are being used to provide audio level here. Other than that, the unit is actually very well built. It's built out of metal. It's not cheap plastic. The other thing I would mention is that these talkback buttons and the microphone toggle button are also kind of cheap feeling as well. They work, and I suspect they'll probably hold up for, for a long time, but they just don't have the nice tactile feedback that, uh, that I'm used to out of a high-quality expensive unit like this. So it would have been nice if those things were just a little bit higher quality, but they are functional, and I, I do think they will hold up but it would be nice if they felt just a little bit nicer for the amount of money that this box uh, sells for. And since this unit has kind of a little bit of a cheaper feeling to the com controls, I'm going to make sure they're really protected very well, and that's why I invested in a Pelican 1200 case. So I've got this case that I picked up specifically for my Express IP Mini. And the 1200 case fits perfectly. Inside that case, I'm able to fit the unit itself, an Ethernet cable, not super long one, but, but enough for most of my setups. And then I have a couple of XLR splitters in here for those times when the commentators are, provi that are providing audio for not just the live stream, but also for the PA system at a particular venue. I'm able to take and split their microphone so that they can use the same microphone to go do, to do both live and the PA as well without having to run two separate microphones and all that complicated setup. So so anyway, all that fits nicely in the Pelican 1200 case. And so that's going to be used. That's what I'm going to use to protect this and to car cart it around from one event to another. Okay, so there you go. A brief discussion about some commentary units that are available. These are kind of mid-range units. Uh, there are some higher-end ones that are out there as well, uh, but these are perfect for the type of productions that I do. I don't need anything fancier than what these things are capable of doing. And so therefore I'm actually pretty happy with what I've got. If you have any questions about 
either of these units here or anything else related to production audio, you can leave those in the comment section down below. Or better yet, join us over on Discord. I have a, I have a channel over there set up specifically for audio, and you can leave your questions there. And either uh, I will answer those or somebody else in the video production community will join in and offer their feedback as well. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I try to do video production related content about once a week. That's the tr that's what I'm trying to do. I don't always succeed, but I try to do production related content about once a week. If you want some additional behind the scenes videos or easier access to me to ask questions or whatever, you can join the YouTube members program. You can click the join button that's down below or uh, sign up on Patreon. It also gives you early access to videos without any advertising as well, as well as some other perks um, that are available for those of you who want to have uh, some additional content as well. So anyway, that's going to do it. So thanks everybody for watching and have a fantastic day.